If you just woke up from a coma, maybe you don't know this, but there is a global pandemic going on that is forcing a lot of us out of work and into our homes. I love to travel, but if this pandemic has taught us anything, maybe it's that the world can do just fine without planes zipping across the sky at all times and polluting the air. Or maybe we've learned that introverts are better equipped to handle a lockdown. We just dig deep and nerd out on whatever we like to do anyway. Or maybe we've learned that the virus doesn't care about our political leanings or the color of our skin. We are all one, united against this common threat and we should join hands and... No? Okay. One thing this pandemic has put on all of us is restraints. We can't do things like uh, we used to and maybe there's a lesson in this for creatives. Anytime you get a completely blank page or a blank canvas, that can actually be pretty harrowing. If everything is possible, how do you even get started? Our brains are hardwired to come up with solutions to problems. And having every option available to you at all times is not necessarily the best prompt. So when you're working on your own projects, Try putting your own guardrails up sometimes. This is something artists have been doing for ages to try and force themselves to come up with new and fresh ideas and concepts. You probably heard of Picasso's Blue and Rose period, or maybe even the Dogma movies formed by a group of Danish directors led by Lars von Trier and Thomas Winterberg. With a list of 10 rules or principles, like all handheld camera, no costumes or studio sets, and no artificial lighting, the group created some of the best movies to come out of Scandinavia in the period from 1995 to 2005. When George Lucas created the first Star Wars, he didn't have the budget that he had for later movies like The Phantom Menace. I'd argue that that original restriction was a good thing. I'll try spinning, that's a good trick. I still think that Quentin Tarantino's first movie, Reservoir Dogs, which was made with very little money and where the cast had to wear their own clothes because they couldn't afford wardrobe, is still the better of his movies. Back in the very early 90s, Tarantino could not just do anything he wanted and get any actor. So where did he focus his creative energy? The script. How many of you think the new season of Twin Peaks is better than the old series. I know, right? That's because the first time around, the studio created a sandbox to play in. Within the constraints of a small town murder mystery, David Lynch and Mark Frost created something that towed the line between the cliché and the surreal. In the new series, Lynch got total creative freedom and... What? Yeah my thoughts exactly. An example from my own creative life is when I made my buddy cop crime book Stiletto out in Denmark originally and released from Lion Forge in English. When you think of cops, what's the first color that comes to mind? Blue, right? So I decided early on I wasn't going to use blue in the book at all. But I had some flashbacks, cutscenes and dream sequences in the book and because the color blue appears nowhere else in the book, once you see it used, you know it's going to force the reader to pay attention. Stiletto is ultimately about a man who can't say no. So if you read through Maynard's dialogue, you'll notice that I took great care not to use the word no anywhere in the book, except once. So whatever your next project is, I urge you to try and think about what creative restraints and limitations you can put on yourself. Uh, whether it's a choice of color palette, a specific tool, a story choice, or even a time restraint like decide never to spend more than six hours drawing a page or only writing 1200 words in a day. I promise that it will make you see things differently and take some of the anxiety and imposter syndrome out of the entire process. Thanks for watching this, uh, hang in there and hope to see you again in the real world sometime.